Hello and welcome to another exercise in watercolour, this time an old scene which uh, uh, I'm quite, or was quite familiar with when it existed, it's all been torn down now unfortunately. It was one of the old, uh, it was the old Fisherman's Pier at Glenscliffe at which I used to visit regularly as a child and uh, particularly Saturday mornings when the fishermen would bring, uh, bring the boats in and of course there's no school, You'd go down here and watch the Watch the fishing boats come in and unload their catch onto the fishermen's pier, and it'd then be boxed up and taken up to uh, to the food processing places. The underground, the uh, background wash, rather that I've used here is just a simple grey blue with uh, a little bit of cobalt teal and a bit of burnt sienna over the whole thing, and uh, just to give me that little bit of a grey. I don't want a very rich sky colour or rich water colour, uh, colour of the water I mean, um, and here I've just put a little bit of burnt sienna and neutral tint um, into uh, into what we're doing here, just to, just again to cut out the, the areas that I've left untreated so far, just the two boats and the men that are in them. The background area of the pier, uh, which I'll do is uh, essentially maybe two or three colours. The uh, on the left-hand side, uh, uh, where I've got the sky grey here and so on, and, and just various applications with a bit of clean water brought down into here. But it's the same, essentially the same wash. The pier itself is uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Here, the stairs over onto the other side and down under the shaded areas here. You know, under the boat I've got a little bit of neutral tint brought into the mix and in under the stairs here and so on and the boat and over here a little bit of ultramarine blue on the other side just to give me a little bit of change of change of colour into the grey that I'm using here for the ripples. The figures in here are lighter colour cut out of a dark background so hopefully we'll make them stand out and up here out of a light background we've figures will be essentially quite dark. Just reinforce the darker areas, spell them out a bit more, a bit more clearly. See a bit of direction as to where I'm going here and under the shaded darker area underneath the wharf. And down to the boats themselves. Again, just cutting around the, these main characters here just to give me a nice contrast of dark on light. A little bit of water into the mix here just to drag it down, soften it slightly so I don't have any dark head, any sharp edges. Always a very busy time. Uh, Saturday morning, as the boats would come in and unload their catch, and, uh, always plenty of people sort of having a bit of a having a bit of a look on the pier. Some of the old fishermen, some who hadn't been out that day, and they'd always come down and have a look to see what uh, what was coming in on the boats, what was biting and what wasn't. But there was always a hive of activity on Saturday mornings. Of course, no school and. Uh, go down and watch these boats come in and they'd be up anything up to 20, 25 boats would come in here, unload, their catch would go off to the cooperative processing plant uh, by a steam trolley which would run along the top of those piers and the fishermen would unload all sorts of things there, they would have, there'd be anything from salmon to crayfish to cooter, all sorts of things used to come ashore there. move the boats from this particular position here once when they're unloaded, take them out and then to a, a mooring that they have uh, um, some two or three kilometres away. 
um, but only probably about you know, 400 metres as the crow flies. So there was always lots of activity, and lots of things to do, boats coming and going, and lots of chatter and colour. Tried to make this reasonably simple if I can, not too many complicated shapes and, and uh, not too much detail. I don't, don't, want to, don't want this to be an exercise in the, uh, the, all of the fittings of a boat and so on. I want more to indicate the, you know, the activity, the, the dynamic of what used to go on at this time. using a dark uh, with a neutral tint, a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of ultramarine blue in it. That's about as dark as I want things to get. I don't use black. Uh, this, is, this provides me with the, the strongest dark I think that I need. Um, I'm always wary about, about uh, when I see black on someone's palette. Unfortunately, it's it's not a colour at, at all. It's it's uh, it shouldn't be treated as one, but it has a um, an effect of creating large, very big holes in your painting into which the colour seems to pour. So it's it's much too dominant. Um, as I've hoped to do with most of these video clips and so on, I, I stress that. These methods are my methods. Um, I don't profess to, to have all the knowledge of watercolour. I don't think anybody that uh, anybody does. Um, even the masters have uh, have things that puzzle them. But these are my methods, and and uh, uh, the ones that I use, if they're of help to you in in your learning process, uh, I'm happy with that. Here I'm just reinforcing that, that wash on the one side with a, a darker mix of the, the same ultramarine blue, a little bit of neutral tint, burnt sienna to give me a stronger grey in that area there, which would be was meant to be in shade. It's a right angle uh, area of the pier. This is at right angles to the area on the left hand side, and consequently the, uh, the light doesn't sort of quite get to there. Trying to create the contrast that I, uh, that I hopefully will, uh, will give the painting a bit of vitality when we uh, we get down towards the finish. Just using a small mop at this stage with a uh, with this darker mix here, I like it. Just a little bit of spring in the in the brush for this uh, the, the exercise, more particularly with the water, to get the ripples on the water and so on. Uh, but see, I've got this dark on the brush right now. I might as well make use of it. Again, my uh, my brush is essentially uh, uh, the mop. Squirrel hair mop. Uh, this one is a Rembrandt brand, um, about size four, I think. Um, but they differ in sizes. All brushes differ in size depending on the manufacturer. So when you're buying a brush, just look at the size of it. If it's the size that you want and it's the right shape, and so on, then quite often the numbers are relevant. Just a few little bibs and bobs in the top of the boat, a bit of shade here and there. The boats would come home full of fish when they'd had a good time, but they also had, some had cray pots. There's this one uh, on, the, on the foredeck of the boat. Others would have um, boxes of cooter on the floor of the boat or salmon 
all loose and they had to be thrown up onto the uh, onto the pier and then boxed up ready to take to the processor. So the boats were, generally speaking, they were, they were, there wasn't a lot of spare room in them when they came home full of fish. Most of the boats fish two people up. Um, obviously you can catch twice as many fish with two good fishermen. But there wasn't a lot of room to uh, move around. These piers were a wonderful piece of uh, engineering, but built from iron bark, I, I, I'm fairly certain, and the timbers would be milled down to certain sizes, and the pylons underneath them, and the framework, all of which was put together by um, public works carpenters, builders, and it really was carpentry on a, on a large scale when they were building these sort of places. section of the pier would have been probably about 100, 120 yards offshore, off the beach line, the, the, uh, the tidal mark, and uh, underneath these boats there would have been anything up to 20 feet of water. Now it's this area here where this, this site was is under about 10 feet of sand. So it doesn't exist anymore, it's been gone for quite some years and so on, but the memories are still pretty strong. Again, it's just... Uh, a few brush marks here and there, a few suggestive marks, just to help with the, the general activity of the scene. I don't want to get into a, a great deal of detail about the, the workings of a fishing boat because there's a lot of them I don't know about. Days when these were when this this activity was going on, there were a lot of fishing boats fishing out of, out of uh, Queenscliff, and uh, sadly, it's a, an era that's gone. But uh, it was a busy time, busy place when uh, the fishing was good. These are just uh, a few fidgets with uh, uh, a dark mix here and there, just. To, Again, trying to bring those contrasts in where I've got quite a bit of quite a bit of light, whiteness of the paper uh, coming through on the on the deck of the boat and the and the hull, uh, and I want that to be pretty much the centre of interest. So I'm trying to affect my contrasts around about that area. Giving the boat a, on the left a bit of colour. Uh, bit of, uh, I'm not exactly sure what colour the blue was, but it was uh, uh, was fairly bright, and uh, every second boat in the port I think was blue with a, a red waterline.
both on the left hand side would tie up their wadding their their opportunity to uh, swing over on a small jetty and unload so uh, they could be doing a bit of preparation over there be, uh, before they got their chance to, to unload their catch onto the pier there was no pier itself over there no jetty over where the blue boat is, it was just purely a spot where you could tie up and wait. Such was the, uh, the queuing system. I did a lot of drying time in the course of this because we're using, using fairly, uh, fairly strong colour almost pure colour out of the palette and we're not creating washes out of it, we're treating it as, uh, uh, as the accents and so on in the painting that we want. Added a bit of colour and a bit of, bit of body colour and so on to the uh, uh, to the characters on the pier. Uh, now with a few, just a few highlights here and there, and uh, pick up. Add a little bit of a little bit of detail to, to the characters on the pier. Um, just the odd highlights, a little bit of white gouache here and there. I don't use a lot of this, it's, uh, it's only at, at this stage of the painting, I don't like to add too much uh, to it, I don't prefer, to, prefer to make use of the, uh, the whiteness of the paper. Suggesting the uh, just a couple of people sitting down up uh, on the upper deck up there and so on. Safety rail on one side of the pier. There was, you, this was uh, an open pier. There were quite a few tourists used to come down here at the same time and uh, and see the, uh, uh, the boats unloading. It was uh, it wasn't a restricted area by any means, um, and you could uh, you could fish off the far side of it, throw a line in. Hopefully, you might pick up something. Might get the odd stray flathead or quite a few leather jackets around there, and they were good eating. Um, but as I say, it wasn't a uh, it wasn't a restricted area. Again, I'm just using a few highlights here and there, and we're almost at the completed stage. I think I don't think it, uh, I'll bother with any more. This is a fun exercise, and a lot of memories for me. Uh, hopefully, I've been able to do them justice and. Uh, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again.